If you haven't heard about JWT, also known as JSON Web Tokens, you should definitely check out this video. What is JSON Web Token? JWT is an open standard, which means it's accessible and usable by anyone. It's used to share information between two parties. Each JWT token contains encoded JSON objects, including a set of claims, usually a ID to identify the user. A claim in the context of a JSON Web Token is a piece of information asserted about a subject. The subject of a JWT is typically an entity such as a user. Claims are encoded in the JWT token and can be used to represent a variety of information such as who issued the token, how long the token is valid for, or what permissions the client has been granted. The specific claims included in a JWT really depends on the use case of the application. When should you use JSON Web Tokens? JSON Web Tokens are commonly used to authenticate users. When a user signs in, the server signs a token that contains the user's ID and any other identifying information. The server will then send the token back to the client. The client is now able to authenticate itself by sending the JSON Web Token with each following request. What is the structure of a JSON Web Token? A JSON Web Token is a string that consists of three parts, each separated by a dot which are a header, a payload, and as last, a signature. Therefore, a JSON Web Token typically looks like the following. Let's break down the different parts. Let's start with the header. The header typically consists of two parts, the type of the token, which is JWT, and the signing algorithm. The header is then encoded with base64 URL to form the first part of the JSON Web Token. Then the second part of the token is the payload, which contains the set of claims. Claims are statements about an entity, usually the user, and additional data. In the image you can see the payload contains a sub-property, which stands for subject. The use case of this JWT token is to authenticate the user, so the subject is the ID of the user. You can also see the additional data, such as the name, admin, and expiration time. The payload is then also encoded with base64 URL to form the second part of the JSON Web Token. Then last we have the signature. To create the signature, you have to take the encoded header, the encoded payload, a secret, the algorithm specified in the header, and sign that. The secret is signed by the issuer. The issuer is the party that created the token, and the client should receive it by the party who they trust. The signature is also used to verify the message so we know it wasn't changed along the way. If we put all those three parts together, our output will be a tree base 64 URL string separated by dots. The following shows a JWT that has the previous header and the payload encoded and is signed with a secret. Let's talk a little bit about how to keep your JSON Web Token safe before you start using it. It is important to keep your JSON Web Token safe because it contains information that can be used to authenticate and authorize you to perform certain actions. If someone were to obtain your JWT token, they could potentially gain access to resources or perform actions on your behalf. Therefore, it is important to keep your JWT token secure and not share it with anyone else. Here are a couple ways to keep your token safe. Make sure that the connection between your client and server is encrypted using HTTPS to prevent someone from intercepting your token as it is transmitted. Use long and unique secrets when signing a token to make it more difficult for someone to guess or brute force, but this speaks for itself. Set the expiration time as short as possible so that it becomes invalid shortly after it is issued. Store your token in a secure location on the client, such as in a HTTP-only cookie. This helps to prevent someone accessing your token through client-side attacks such as cross-site scripting. To mention, on the official website of JWT.io, they have a debugger where you can copy and paste your signed JWT tokens and decode them. Don't worry about sensitive data on the official website of JWT because it's all done client-side. In the next video, we are going to talk about how to implement JWT authentication into your Node.js application. I'll cover everything about signing, 
verifying and sharing the token between the client and the server and storing the token in a safe place. For now, I want to thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.